right, so this is going to be a review instead of a reaction since I recorded this yesterday and for whatever reason the file for mine never took and showed up and then the file for this is uh, for whatever reason the frame rates on it weren't matching up with anything like I, I put it in I put it in to see if I could at least get things uh, see how it recorded and there's barely any stuff for dialogue or anything I wouldn't even play uh, within Premiere Pro so having to do this all over again lovely that being said we're gonna be looking at episode five and six of uh, season three I absolutely love this show uh, yeah <laughs> that's the one I've got. He? That one there. That's smashing. Aye. That's the sharp 37 inch plasma windscreen. 100 hertz tube. Wall mountable. It's the bollocks. What have you got? Amstrad. Washed out colour, all fuzzy around the edges. 14 inch tube. 20 minute warm up. It's bollocks. Oh, aye. <laughs> I see your dilemma. You see, it's just too wee, son. Have you ever tried to watch a big horse race in a portable, eh? Or the football? Hundreds of tiny wee men chasing about a ball that you can't even see. It's no use. I'm needing something bigger. So what are you after? Size-wise? Well, I don't know. I mean, how much would that there set me back? £2,700. £2,700, right? Let's see. Oh, I forgot. It's my arse that's lined with diamonds. Well, what about this one? Oh, how, how much would that set me back? Five nine nine. How much <laughs> were you looking to Winston spend? Winston is not happy with those prices. 80 quid, max. Aye, well... There's an optician next door. Get yourself a thicker pair of specs. <laughs> oh, Eric, hi, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go, burking hair. Shut your hole, Bobby. If we were burking hair, we wouldn't be robbing your grave. We'd be pissing in it. <laughs> Bounce a lager, you prick, you. Aye, two pies and all. Two pies? Could you not get steak pie at the funeral? That's the only reason you go to these things, isn't it? Are you going to shut up? We were there to pay our final respects, that is all. Well, that's Billy Ferguson buried down. Aye, what's left of him? Bloody liberty, what happened to that man? Mm. What a way to go, eh? Heart attack. Bad for, deed. Lying at the back of the door eight days. Aye, right. Doug eats you. Paws first, then the face. <laughs> that's what Doug's day, apparently. Aye, there's nothing left of Billy when they found him. Mind you, the Doug had ballooned up to double the size. Aye, <laughs> well, full of Billy. Must be smashing being your age, eh? We pain down your arm, dog sitting in the corner like that. Of course, you don't have to worry about a dog eating your boss, eh, Bobby? It's a wee fanny you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you still looking for a hoose up your block? You should get on to the council, cos that's one line empty now. Uh, good call, boys. I'll get up there in a motor. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be a heck of a way to find a uh, different spot to live. Wait until somebody dies so you can take their flat. To Billy. To Billy. Pull it. Pain a lager, Bobby. Hello, lads. Oh, how's it going, Winston? That's Billy, plant it. Billy who? Billy knee, boys. <laughs> what size was his telly? Eh? Hey? Ugh. I was down the high street there looking at new tellies. The one I've got's no use. It's too wee. And? And I can't afford it, can I? They're too dear. I mean, how can they justify all that money just for a telly, eh? That's how I got this. You see, it says here, if you can't afford a big telly, you can build one. Well, that's what today, aye, aye. Oh, and see, while you're at it, gonna build me a nice big one and all oh, you daft tit. <laughs> what are you laughing at, eh? I mean, how hard can it be? If you've got all the bits, the wires and the plugs and the valves and all that. Valves? <laughs> you didn't get valves and tellies <laughs> anywhere. It's, it's all things and <laughs> electronicals. That's right, I've got the, um, the, the white light, the big light. <laughs> wow. I can't believe you two haven't been heed hunted for Hitachi. <laughs> Mark my words, there's nothing to this telly building. Going to get that for us, Victor? Hello, clansmen. John. 
Christ, I thought you were dead. How have you been? Smashing, I'll tell him right away. Cheerio, bye. That was John Logie Baird. He says you're an arsehole. <laughs> Yes. Sign for us. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Hey, what is it? That, son, is a telly. In an envelope. That's right. Aye. Right. Oh, Archie's coming out. Archie Taylor? Aye. You'll no want to go, but you'll want to stay in and watch your envelope. <laughs> <laughs> no. I want to see Archie. Stay in and watch your envelope. <laughs> well, you want in the lift? Hey. You don't I die. love this little oh, exchange. I've got a van. <laughs> and here. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby! Jack, Victor. What are you doing? You're coming in for a pint there. Oh, no, they knew you're no. I'm shot for the next half hour. For what? I didn't get that flat up your block. Archie go to it. Archie's coming out. What do you mean Archie's coming out? The councillor moved him so they can pull down his old building. You'll never guess. You'll never guess. <laughs> this right Archie's here. Archie's coming out. <laughs> Hi. I just don't know? like that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're not going to tell her what I know. I've had to get up there early. Got a good spot. Oh, I didn't hell. Look him. That's what today is, aye. Eh? How long's he been in there? Oh, he went in mid 60s, that right, eh, Victor? Aye, mid 60s. That would be when you moved in, eh? I used to stay a couple of doors down from me, so. And he's never set a foot outside his house? No, complete hermit. What's he do for food in there? Well, the social services will pop up twice a week, make sure he's all right. Messages and that. Oh, aye. Social services. That'll keep him up to date with what's going on outside the world, old tip. Why, oh, he's up to date, all right. Even the hermit knows you're a wanker, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe this is the first episode. Maybe maybe uh, N Naveed's uh, daughter's wedding or whatever. Was it his daughter or was it his brother? Or something like that. Anyways, I think that might be the only other time I've, I've ever seen... Bobby out, outside the uh, Klansman. Jarvis and Victor McDade. How are you? How are you? Hi, good. You used to have a load of black hair. <laughs> <laughs> so did you. Hi. Funny. Coming out. Now, Mr. Taylor, your flitting's at three. Hi. We've got a car arranged for you. We'll take you over to your new flat in the Osprey Heights. Archie, that's your block. Now ah, you'll be in with us. We'll organise a cup of tea for you and your furniture will arrive in a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Mm. Is the bay horse still out there? It's called the Klansman knew me. <laughs> Aye, and it's still a shite hole. <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch a break to save his life. Um, I I'm going to go for a pint. Is that OK? Aye, of course. We'll uh, give you a lift. No. No, I'd like to walk. Uh, that's all right, darling. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll look after him. OK. Here's your keys. Welcome to Archie. We all clubbed together and we got you a Big Mac and fries. It's funny that even the youngsters took and got Enjoy <laughs> decided to celebrate oh, right. the, the occasion Thank or at least son. give them something. McDonald's, that's... Uh, that was out of this world. <laughs> what was it? Hamburgers at McDonald's. McDonald's? Is that a butcher's? <laughs> <laughs> butcher's? No, it's a fast food shop. They've got them in my other place now. I could get used to them. Oh. You and 30 billion others. <laughs> yeah. See you outside? Aye. Where are the houses? Oh, they're all pulled in. Where are the people? All pissed off. Who's the Prime Minister? 
Christ, you don't know that either. But the look on no. both of their faces when they ask who's the prime minister. Never got a paper. No, I never take a paper. What about the telly? I put my boot through that 1966 World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard Jeff Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid thing to do, really. Not at all, no. I lost a good wireless that day. <laughs> ah, you've got a lot of catching up today, haven't you? What's that? These? No, no name, Bobby. They're optics. They've been about since before the Second World War. That. Oh, this? This is a microwave. Oh, my God. A microwave? What the is way it Bobby do? does with this. Feel what? Hi. Cold pie. Still cold. McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> be like crack. <laughs> I love it. I give them a full day of it. One of the things I like about this episode and how it unfolds. <laughs> you imagine, like, having McDonald's for the first time. Granted, it's not the best food in the world, but as far as, like, fast food is concerned it's you could do work you could do way worse than a big mac just that it's the sauce really that sets it off to be honest with you i mean it's not even a it's not even a full quarter pound or nothing like that but that sauce and composition of it you know i think the only thing that's better on the menu there is probably the the bacon and cheese double quarter pounders that I could probably eat one of every day. Not the healthiest thing in the world, but pretty good. Uh, imagine the first, you know, having a Big Mac and uh, the fries from McDonald's for the first time. If you've been shut in and you haven't had or don't know what fast food is, something like that would probably be just the best thing in the world to you. What's the sheep for? This is the screen. This way you'll see the picture. Well, explain to me again. How does the picture get your stupid wee telly onto the wall? For God's sake. Right, you Luddite. Now, the reason you can see the TV picture from the other side of the room is because it gives out what are known as lumens. So, what you do is you build a box round your telly, harness the lumens, magnify them, and then you project them onto a blank white screen. Voila. Big bastard telly. <laughs> very eloquent, very technical. Aye. And once this is finished, I'll be building another one. What for? Anybody that wants one. Because once you see this baby in action, you'll all be wanting one. <laughs> oh, that science has given you a big heed. Shut up, Igor, and hit the lights. The monster is about to awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's no right. Who is that? <laughs> you can't oh, no. see anything. <laughs> see your life. She's toy. <laughs> Hey ho, 
You fit? No. I don't fancy coming out the day, boys. Hey. Oh, we're going to do all sorts. No, I'm feeling a bit tired, you know. Oh, come on. I'll get you one of them cheesy burgers you like. No, I think I'll pass on that if that's all right. Uh, fine, eh? See you now. Tarzan. You say Tarzan now? Aye, Tarzan. Hey, what about him? Well, there's Tarzan, right? He lives in the jungle. Brought up by animals, very, very sharp. I love the correlation he's he making here. He only knows here. the law of the jungle. Aye. We wee pal, tree and a monkey. <laughs> Aye. Then he gets taken into civilization, but he doesn't fancy it. Uh-huh. So, he goes back to what he knows. He goes back to the jungle. That's smashing, Victor. You seem to know the Tarzan story. What in the name of Christ has that got to do with Archie? <laughs> Jesus, Jack. Archie's Tarzan. I oh, come here, don't talk a lot of piss. That's what you're on about. Archie comes out, he doesn't fancy it, he's away back in. He's no more than a shaved monkey, Jack. <laughs> so Archie's Tarzan? Aye. Well, that would make his flat the jungle. Yes, sir. So who's cheater the monkey in all this? Name <laughs> Archie's about to hold himself up again. I know. We know the years have passed, millions of things have happened, and he's nain the wiser. Yeah. We'll go to the library, right? We'll get books, loads of old newspapers, and tell him every single thing that's happened for 1966. There's no need for that. What is it new? Right, Tarzan. This woman here wants a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love they catch him on, uh, up on everything from 19, since 1966. They send an Isa. They got the perfect person for the job. <laughs> What's she going to talk that poor man's head off? And this is yesterday's paper. <laughs> Imagine, Navid. A home cinema in your front room. You could go for a piss and no miss half the flick. You could have a baby. See, it's my house. No couples practically shagging in front of you. Nobody at your shooter gab, gab, gabbing all the way through the film. Ah, uh, take it, I says no invited then. No. Ah, uh, quality. So, how much is this technology costing you? Tenner. Add me to your list of doubting Thomases. You are an idiot. Good. I'll see you tonight. The main feature starts at eight. Here, you feeling a bit better after you sit down my eyes? Or? I'm Jack, I am. She's got a gob on her, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, lads, for the first time, I'm actually enjoying being out. Good. Oh, that's smashing. Good up. So, uh, what made you become a hermit? Christ's sake, Bobby. I mean, you tacky, booted bastard, you. Yeah. Oh, it's all right, boys. The lad's just curious. I was evacuated to a farm during the war. A lovely big place. We out past Stirling. I love how the rest of the bar Why? basically just now went quiet and just and listening to him. There's a looked after me. Really old. It was great. Every morning I'd help him feed the animals. I had my own horse. The whole thing. Then, we got news. My dad had been killed in Belgium. Four months after that, my mom dies of TB. I could have got him Uncle John's, but my Auntie Betty wasn't keen. Didn't have any kids. Must have liked it that way. So I grew up on a farm. But of course, they died. I. The farm didn't belong to me. The bank took it. I came back here and got a hoose off the corpy. Jesus, coming back to this place was like coming to New York. I mean, the place was jumping. There was cars everywhere, buses, music, factories, gangs around the boot killing each other. <laughs> I mean, coming back from a farm to all that, well, you know, it was just too much. Now, at first I was going out, you know, to the shop and that, but that winter I got pneumonia. And that's when the social worker got involved. They were bringing the messages, and that was it. I got better, but I never went out again. One year, a wee moose came. 
looking for scraps and that. I was encouraging it, you know what I mean? I was quite happy to run up your arm. I used to talk to you. <laughs> Sometimes I even imagine it talking. I love this story but... right here. Uh, every day it came, regular as clockwork. So did it die? Aye, it died. I was having my cornflakes one morning, pouring them out into the bowl. It turns out he'd been gone every day as well. Regular as clockwork. The cornflakes had wee shit boys all the way through it. Traps <laughs> <laughs> snapped the wee bastards back. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't even look at a cornflake. <laughs> Call a day in a vid. Aye, just a soft piece for me. Are you in? Aye, I'm in. Come away through. Still a couple of good seats left. Hey, we brought up to you, if that's all right. Of course. Here's some beer here for you, Winston. Good. I'll stick them in the fridge. Here. You come through here with me. Right. You'll like this. Now, I bought this malt back in 1966. 14 quid it cost me back then. That was a lot of money. Aye. No. I was going to open it when England get beat, but needless to say, it's still no opened. Glen Dronich. Is what it looks like on there? Yeah, that's what it is. Here's to you, old chum. Out and about. That's a really nice thing, Winston. That's a really nice thing you've done. Out and about. Don't be touching that. I'm switching that on. What are we watching? The 8 o'clock movie. Tower and Inferno. Oh, that. Paul Newman's a fireman and Steve McQueen's the architect. Not damn. It's the other way about. Right. Well, I've one mare, then I'm putting it away. I'm not letting the arsehole's getting it. <laughs> it's Fred Astaire not in the Tower and Inferno. Right. We well, don't talk pish. Fred Astaire wasn't in the Tower and Inferno. Well, I'm sure he is. Ah, that's right, mate. He comes in and he goes like that. Hard on the new, the building's in fire. <laughs> Actually, Jackie is, isn't it? <laughs> that was something Turn Inferno, 70s disaster classic, starring Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, William Holden, and Fred. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 7.30, Christ! Winston, here, hurry up, this winter's oh, like starting. Come on, come on. Hey, hold on, David, up and get out to your seat. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. No, no, no. no. Shh, you up, you sit down. <laughs> David had a place rare. right there in the front of the night. Now, gentlemen, what are you about to witness this evening? Shut up and turn it on. <laughs> we'll work anyway. <laughs> Some need to push. Sit in your ass, <laughs> Gentlemen, prepare to be amused. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, it's like a, like a picture hall. I don't know what to say. Ah, he's a clamp, isn't he? Now, what's happening here, gentlemen, is that the light has been refracted from the tube onto the Oh, bed. there he is, Fred Astaire. Huh? <laughs> You're the right up you, Jack. Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. Oh, crystal clear. Look at that. Look at the flames. <laughs> this is a... Than a monster. Very realistic. Ah, you can practically smell it. Aye, yeah. that's because your curtains are on fire, Winston. Oh, <laughs> 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 Big screen telly for a ten, are you? <laughs> Plus a set of curtains of pelmet up a carp in a radiogram. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> it could have been, I suppose, aye. Aye, well, this is my floor. <laughs> oh, thanks for a great night, lads. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Bastards! You better phone the polis. Well, no need the polis. Name of Christ is all that. That's about 40 years worth of social money. You should have that in the bank. Oh, no, be no. <laughs> you should have it in the bank, Archie. Aye. I know. Do you know that's a fortnight now? 
And Stone Empty seen him. Man been holding on to his money. <laughs> Put it in the couch. <laughs> I don't know if that's the place I'd be putting it, but... Oh, well, he's not coming back out, is he? First time in years he sets foot out of his door and he gets his house tanned. It's a bloody liberty. Aye. Enough to turn them down to a hermit. It's a shame, too, because he was getting on so well. I was settling in nice, the pub and that. See, I don't think that's right, you know, locking yourself away like that. I've got a good mind to go up to his door and say something to him, eh? Ach, I'm not so sure, Jack. Sure they're dragging him down the stairs. What are you going to say to him to get him out? Listen, he used to. Get him out to what, eh? Craig Lang. A shite hole of the first order. I mean, it's all right for us. We're used to it. It's him for us. We don't know any better. But he's come out. He's taken one look at Craig Lang and all its occupants, us three included, and he's thought, stick that up your arse. <laughs> Doesn't help that he got, you know, Paul's broken into it. between at our age. I think we should be keeping a watch out for him, you know. Or at the very inside, go up to the door and tell him he's making a big mistake. Aye. Aye. Aye, you're right, Jack. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave Winston there to take him, <laughs> finish painting his house. Just, ah, right, we're gone. Right, chop the door. What about it, Chapa? This was your idea. Ah, uh, you agreed with me. Get the bloody door, Chap. You chap it. You chap it. Chap the door. Will you chap the door? Oh. Lads, look at you. Is it your intention not to come out again? Uh, before you answer, you'd be sadly missed. I mean, we were getting on really well. No, I'm not coming out, lads, again. But think about all you're gearing up. Like what? Well, there's us, the park, the tune, the clansmen. OK, forget the clansmen, but there's lots today. Lads, you're being lovely, but don't worry. I've been used to staying indoors all the years. That's what I know. That's what I'm comfortable with. Archie, how can you be comfortable with that? It's a miserable existence. You can gussied that up really nice, like. existence. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't bank the money. <laughs> And I'll no go short a company. Oh. So you've made your mind up then? I have, Jack. I. One. Cheerio, lads. Oh, that's I've left my bonnet in there. I'll get you a new one. Fuck. Who's this new? <sighs> what is that? It's a parcel. You've to sign for it. Aye. Well, you better bring it in here. Stick it through here. Right. Stick it there. Dear Winston, thanks for the dram. Leave the telly building to the Japs. Archie. Oh, look, Chris. A telly in an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Got him one of them nice ones. <laughs> Archie, if you're not coming out, can we not come in? <laughs> Lovely big telly. Uh huh. And they leather couches. Technically, you still would be a hermit, Archie. Aye, there's nothing to say a hermit can't have visitors, Archie. <laughs> not at all. Archie. <laughs> well, I suppose that's that then, eh? Aye. Uh, I see a pint at the clansman. Aye.
and there we have it. I, just the fact that, number one, this episode right here, they got, fella comes out of it first time in years that he's come out of his apartment. He decides to take a gander around at things, starting to get a little bit, you know, see the outside, starting to see the outside world, and then, yeah, not so great, unfortunately, because then, uh, you know, his house gets broken into, and he decides, you know, stay in again. But Winston trying to take and build <laughs> that television. Bro, the shenanigans these fellas get up to. Time for the next episode. I have to say, I have to say this, like, since it's being a review and everything like that. This episode right here, like, it seems like the very last episode in each of the seasons so far have been top-notch and this included. Right then. Let's get a look at you. Oh, no. No, 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 not good. Not good at all. Aye, not good. Not good at all. It's all in the chest. Listen. <laughs> I'm just going to have a lie down on the couch with a wee hot water bottle. Yes, John. Bye. <laughs> ah, that'll give the bastard something to think about. That's bad news, that. What's bad news? Making out you're at death's door and he whore rang with you. And him away her there worried sick. <laughs> As a buggery. He called last month there when I had the flu. Sure I was bad with it, Jack. Aye. And he gives it on the phone. Look, it's probably just a cold, da. Uh, take a couple of aspirins and away to your bed. Mm. Aye, that's right. Uh, see, that's you clamp now, cos you know what he's like. He's a he's an uncaring bastard. That's enough now. Do you know he was out there at the phone? What? Oh, oh, I don't know, Dad. We'll probably not get a holiday this year. We're too busy. Which I know to be a lot of pish, because the Grand Wayne let slip to me that they're, they're going to her moz for a fortnight in the... Hang me. Uh, uh, Runcorn. I mean, that's only just doing the road. Yes, you're quite right, Victor. You have indeed been treated shoddily. Nay, shitily. <laughs> if I were you, I would contact my city solicitor and inform him the McDade millions will not be passed on to the natural son, John, <laughs> but awarded in its totality to the cat and dog home. He shall suffer for his lack of concern by receiving not a curdy of my millions and none of my stuff. Surely he'll be expecting to be bequeathed the side plate of Blackpool. <laughs> Nor will he ever clap eyes on the tea towel of Balloch. <laughs> Hey, how'd you get on? Fantastic. She was that accurate. Oh, oh. what'd she tell you? I'm coming into money. Aye. I'm going to get a holiday. Oh. I have to worry less. Oh. <laughs> and I've got a big change coming. Oh, that's great news. And took me now. Good for you, Peggy. Aye. Next. Oh, jeez. That's me. <laughs> uh, leave your scampi on the table, hen. Then he went my tent, honked to it. Right. <laughs> oh dear. That isn't it Long John Silver. If I was Long John Silver, you'd be first to walk the plank, you wank. Oh. <laughs> Tam, Eric. What's wrong with you? Fit's louting. I can barely stone on it. Is it a bunion or something? No, it's not a bunion. Yep. Wait till I show you. Whoa, you <laughs> bastard. What is that? Put your slipper back on. That would give you the book. Yeah. I'm seeing the doctor in the morning. He's going to give me something for it. Uh, a hacksaw. <laughs> oh, what a joy to be old. That's not getting better. That's finished. Tell you what, though. When it drops off next week, I'll give you a ten and we'll stick it behind the bar as a track. I'm in agony here. Oh, what's going on? Oh, it's a scampi and taro night. £2.50. Peggy organised it. What's taro? Kerbs. 
Look at the future and that. Apparently she's very, very good. What a sight! <laughs> Whiskey, Bobby. Well, uh, what happened there? Uh, she didn't like her reading. Well, what did you tell her? Tell her she was going to get knocked down by a motor next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell her that for? That's what is said in the cards. Ella, you're here for entertainment. No telling they're going to snuff it. Bobby, the cards don't lie. Is there somebody here in pain? With a leg or a foot. <laughs> I love it all oh, looking at Winston like me. <laughs> He's my scampy. <laughs> that is a bit whiffy, isn't it? Aye, a wee bit. Do you smoke, Mr. Ingram? No, no, not at all, son. I gave it up five years ago. Too dear, sure. How many would you say you smoked a day? Ten. Fifteen, say eighty. Eighty. I just love how that number just escalates. Ten, fifteen, eighty, like offhanded, like, yeah, it's no big deal. I don't smoke no more, but long reaching consequences, apparently. Yes, well, I would say that could be the reason for your foot. I'm gonna send you up to see a Dr. Fletcher at the Royal. Get him to have a look at it. Is it that bad, is it? It's pretty bad. Bad enough to claim attendance allowance. Oh yes, I would say so. Well, he I'll always like looking for the extra money. Social security. Yes, dance. No, listen, that's the number of the hospital. Can you get up there tomorrow? No problem, son. There's just one other person I've got to see first. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. I've got a gammy fit, and it's worth an extra forty quid a week in attendance allowance. <laughs> What are you looking so chipper about? Oh, the doctor says I've got extra social security causing my bad fit. So what are we? Jesus! What <laughs> bogging? What caused that? Years and years of smoking. Here. You might get lucky, Jack. You could be next. Cheery bite. <laughs> you could be next. Why you take that out? <laughs> Quick like. You'll be back in ten minutes fishing that out of there. Push. That's me done with. Jesus, I have known you a long, long time. And I have never seen you without that pipe. Ah, I know. Uh, I've just got to watch, but you know. How's that? Well, they say that when you stop smoking, the first thing that happens is the old weight shoots up. Oh, aye. Aye. Something to do with the increase in appetite. That's a fact, eh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he starts eating tea cakes. You've got a message in your answer machine. I'll retrieve that. Da, 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 da. Indeed you will not. Last time I had a message, you rubbed it out. Oh, Mr. Popular, that was about two bloody year ago. Have you not had a phone call since then? No. <laughs> You're just jealous because I've got a machine and I've got a message. Are you going to let us hear it or what? Right. You may retrieve the message now. Oh, shite. What? I've only went and rubbed it out. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> only kidding. <laughs> Are you ready? I ready. Okay. Hi, Dad, you're not in. Um, maybe you're sleeping. Look, I hope you're feeling better. I'll uh, phone later. <laughs> there you are. There you are, boy. He's worried. Look, John calls me, if I'm lucky, every six months. He's called yesterday. There he is on the phone the other day. He's sitting up and he's, he's paying attention now. That's no fair. That means you've got him worried for nothing. <laughs> well, it seems to be working. Hello, Johnson. Yes, I got your message. I just went out for a wee bit of fresh air there. Thought it might do me some good. No, I just seem to have tired myself out. <laughs> Jack? Yes, Jack's here. How? He wants to speak to you. Come on. Get it up, you Victor. I am not telling any lies for you. Here he is. Poor <laughs> <laughs> John. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, well, yeah, yeah, he's not great, as he know. No. But he's got me sure. Aye. Aye. I'll make sure he gets a right good rest. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a smashing idea, son. That's what to do, I Phone them all. Oh, okay. Right you are, Johnny boy. See you later now. All the, all... You are one big lousy bastard. I know. I feel lousy. Really lousy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how you doing, Isa? Terrible. Do you know what that bloody spay wife says to me? Ah, the spay wife. She says, you're going to hear about a birth, you're going to get lucky with money, and get this, you're going to die in thirst. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, come on, you don't actually believe that, do you? I don't know what to think. Everybody else said she was dead accurate. She's put a fear of God in me. So, how are you going to meet your maker? Knocked in by car. A silver car. Oh, wait a minute. What? I've got a silver car. Maybe I'm going to knock you down on Thursday so I don't have to pee on Friday. <laughs> it's not funny. Can't eat her £2.50. £2.50? For your fortune? You got a plate of scampi and all for that. Hold the bus, Isa. I think it is safe to assume that your spay wife is talking pish. Well, who's that? Well, scampi, eh? A big bag of that for the cash and carry will set you back about £7.99. How many of you are there? Eight is. Eight portions, eh? So that's a quite a skull. Was the tartar sauce? Oh, aye. Aye, so that's another 10p, which leaves you with £1.40. £1.40? Aye, with this transport travel, the Adam backs you £2 each way is £4. The pounds, mental right, math here to take and figure it all out. Take that away from the £1.40, leaves you with 90p. So, you're telling me you queued up to pay 90 pence to be told that you are going to pop your clogs on Thursday? <laughs> but forgive me, Isa, but you're being a stupid cow. If you could read fortunes, would you only be charging 90 pence? Would you buggery? In fact, why don't you give me 90 pence now? And I will tell you that when you wake up in the morning, you'll be Bridget Bardo, huh? Aye, I suppose you're right, Navid. Hey, I'm your girl, 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 Six eggs, Navid. Oh, hello, Isa. Isa, that's Noreen Kirkwood, had a wee boy. Seven pounds, six ounces. <laughs> Poor Isa. You got a wee sharp knife now. I do, aye, how? Both carrots. I'm going to cut them up into wee bits. <laughs> then what are you going to do? Are you going to stick them all back together again? No, I'm going to eat them, sure. That's going to keep me half the pipe. Oh, aye, the pipe. How are you getting on with that? Shite, actually. Couldn't get to sleep for ages last night, and then... When I eventually did drop off dreams, you know. What kind of dreams? Pipe dreams. <laughs> Pipe dreams. Pollock naked. <laughs> running about a tobacco field. Slow motion. And I, and the field's in fire. The, and the dream wind. he has. I just lie down. Fill my lungs like that. <laughs> Those wee carrots are going to save you, are they? Ah, uh, well. Let's hope so. Ah. I'll be mad, John. <laughs> What are you doing? Just getting into character. <laughs> Hello? Hello, John? You're what? Hopefully, <laughs> you look on his right. face like concern. <laughs> okay, bye. Jack? What? That was John. He's at the airport, he's here. He's going to be here in half an hour. I bloody tell you. Tell me what? Putting on that performance in the phone, now look what you've done. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Don't drag me into it. I'm doing a hole here. Aye, you're doing a hole, but you dug it yourself. Giving it all that, oh, I'm going to go and lie on the couch with a hot water bottle, I'm nowhere. <laughs> you must the boy into a frenzy and now he's here. Right, right. You open the door. Aye. And you say, you're too late. Your dad's deed. That's a good <laughs> shit. He's just off the phone to you. Seems he'll be here in half an hour. What have I do? Open the door and say, oh, hello, John. In you come. Oh, by the way, your dad died ten minutes ago. Ah, you're right, it's garbage, Jack. You think of something. How have I to think of something? Well, you were the last one that spoke to him. You probably laid it on too thick. <laughs> laid it on too thick. You're to blame. <laughs> oh, aye, aye, that's right. I'm to blame, aye. I'm going to accept that. In fact, here's what we'll do. I'll get an iron brew bottle, right? And batter your bastard melt in you. <laughs> and when he comes to the door. What a bloody spot you've got us into. What are you doing, but? 
<laughs> he got the shape of a pipe. <laughs> How does this sound? With you. Oh, for a tenner, my feet. Oh, jeez, that's bad. What's bad about finding a... Ah, oh, the spay wife. First the birth, now the finding of the money, eh? I'm going to get killed by car on Thursday. Now, Isa, calm your beans. It's a coincidence. I oh, know. You're not going to die on Thursday. Just take it easy, eh? Put it to the back of your mind and don't let your life be ruled by such silliness. You think? Aye. Oh, oh I'm just being daft, haven't I? Aye, but... You no, know, just in case, huh? Maybe I should uh, pop this in the window, eh? Grapes, any grapes? Aye, just there. All right, right, eh? Oh, let me up. Here's friend. Here's friend. Oh, and I need the uh, Lucas Aid and uh, Paracetamol. Thank you. Um, I need a kind kiss. I'll do. You okay, Jack? Uh, me, aye. Oh, what a bloody day I'm having. Uh, I've keyed up my pipe, you know. Oh, good for you. Uh, I'm not on jangly way, but you know. Uh, oh, I'm sure that'll pass. I'm sure it will. Now, if I ask you for tobacco under no circumstances, you'll be able to let me have it, OK? Understood. Doesn't matter how much I want it. Doesn't matter how much you want it. I've no to get it. You've no to get it. Begging, <laughs> begging, <laughs> shouting and bawling, doing on my knees and everything, I have not to get tobacco. No tobacco. Yeah. Uh, OK. See you later. I'll take a packet of tobacco. <coughs> Nimveet! Come on, Jack, seal's a seal. Ah, oh, you big bastard, you. You'll always be here for you, Jack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nimveet's like, I'm not being no help with that. Who's that? It's your son, John. Came to visit you. Dad? God, son. It's good. <laughs> Come closer, son. Let me see. I love this. That right there. Come closer, son, so I can see. Like he's some biblical character, or he's a mafia don on his last legs, or something like that. Ah, oh, you're getting old, just like your dad. How is your flight, son? Oh, never mind that. How are you? You know. Jack! What? Can I get a wee cup of tea? Aye, aye. Jack, could you run us up a wee play of sandwiches and all? What do you want on them? Cheese. Could you grate it, but? <laughs> Gr grate it? Put a wee bit of onion through it. Onion? Ranch and pickle. Pickle, right? Right. Hey, Mr Ingram, you wish to apply for attendance allowance? For my fit. You take fits? No, for my foot. What's wrong with it? It's knackered. What do you mean? It's sore when I walk, it's sore when I'm sleeping, it's just sore all the time. Right, and you want us to give you extra money for that? Yes. Well, we'll need a doctor's report. Of course. That won't be a problem. Of course it won't. What do you mean? Of course it won't. <laughs> well, as I can see from your file, it's one of the things you excel in, claiming. In 1992, you claimed for a new cooker and a new fryer because you said two big men came in, tied you up and stole them. That's right. That was horrible, that. Right, and then last year you claimed a laundry allowance because of incontinence Due to a motorcycle accident. Yes, yes, that's quite correct. I, I was on the sidecar of my mate Phil. Do they not follow up on this stuff? Like, it seems like they follow up to make sure there's actually a motorcycle accident. Phil's uh, motorcycle, and we had an oil patch, and boof, that was it. It, it. it came away, and I shot myself. <laughs> that was me after that. I just got into the way of it. I've been doing it ever since. I've got a big nappy on right now. <laughs> so this claim, to be honest, is... A bit of a letdown. Eh? It's not very imaginative, is it? I do have a bad foot. I don't think you do. Well, darling, how would you like to get your tongue in between those tootsies? Get that off my desk. I'll just get your form. <laughs> 
There was no stain with you then? No. He's checked his cell into one of the big hotels in the town. Why don't you just come clean and tell him you've been acting a bloody good? That will be right. He'll go off his nut, Jack. So when are you seeing him again? He's going to pop up later. Anyway, I think he's a chance to get a pint. <laughs> ha! Damn! <laughs> oh, what am I doing now? What am I doing now, Jack? Eh? Eh? I, I thought we could see if it maybe managed to. Well, this on the spot acting. All due respect, here. Jack. I think my dad should be in the house. Yeah. John's right, Jack. I should be in the house. <laughs> no, that's a lot of nonsense, Victor, sure. We better come near the other world, the good. I'll come with you. Excuse me, Dad. Jack. Hello? It's a hotel. My visa number, right? What'll we do? Uh, go for a pint. But everyone in the clansmen will be wondering what's wrong with me. Uh, okay, pint. <sighs> Aye, aye, aye. Take your feathers out of there. Aye, there we go. Hey, I'll just stand here for a wee minute. Catch my breath. It's off a smoky in there, Jack. I'll wait with you then. Right, I'll, I'll wait on then. <laughs> oh, eh. Hey. No, I'm not going to wait. I'll, I'll get in the pub. <laughs> here. Listen, oh, Tam, Eric, Shh, Bobby, Victor, no well at all. What's wrong, man? Nothing. Huh? Bob's coming from South Africa because Victor's made out he's no well. What's he doing that for? He just is. Victor's laying it on thick, crinkle, cut, crisps. That's what I like along with my beer. So three lagers, please, and the, the crisps. Let's get you a seat, Dick. Aye. Beer, Victor? Are you sure? I could get you a wee lemon tea or a hot chocolate, seeing as you're no well. <laughs> I love that little. I'm in a terrible attack of the thirsts here, Bobby. I'll have a pint of lager, please. Victor's buying. Hey. Otherwise, I'll go to that cludgy and start blabbering. You rat. I'll have one and all. You know me, Victor. I like you, but it's sticky in. Single malt buys my silence. Right, you bastards. <laughs> Jack, do you think he's buying it? Oh, I don't know, Victor. He looks a wee bit suspicious to me. Here's what I'll do. I'll take a fall. Oh, I, I, I did that. Oh! You're doing it, you bloody clown. I don't know be better if he's seen you doing it. <laughs> right, I will cue you to fall, right? <clears throat> Hold it. Hold it. Ash. Oh! Nah, false alarm, that's not him. That'd be good. I love the fact that he had to keep doing this. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the indignity. Jags, uh, my hip. Finished. Hi. There's nothing wrong with you, is there, Dad? No. Give us your keys. Oh, keys. I'll see you back at the flat. <clears throat> That'll be five pounds sixty for your drinks, Mr. Brando. <laughs> ah, no, Doctor, give it to me straight. I can take it. I'm a man. Are they going to have to hack it off? <laughs> yes. What? You really should have come to as much sooner with this. Eh? There's been no circulation in that foot for far too long. Oh, you bastard. Waiting on it. I couldn't move. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll give that spray wipe for Jesus. <laughs> That's it. It's over now. I think you're in the clear. Lord have mercy. The silver card is not a big one. John! John! No, Dad, 
forget it. John! Nothing wrong with you now, is it, Dad? For God's sake, hold on! Nah. Look, stop right there. I'm very angry at you right now, Dad. I know, I know. I'm way out of line. Out of line? I flew over here worried sick. For what? For nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. I know, I know. Do you not think I've got better things to be getting on with than travelling over here for a joke? For a prank? Listen, son, I'm busy. I'm at a very important part of my career right now. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a bad way to behave. I've been stupid. I'm a s silly old bastard. But you... You never bloody phone. I'm on my own here. Apart from Jack, I've named me. D did you know that Jack took me with him to Canada a few weeks back there? Canada? I see, you didn't even know that, did you? No. No. I mean, did it ever occur to you that I might be missing you? I mean, all this... I'm sorry. I'm missing you. What like was Canada? Smashing. Aye. Oh, I love their grub. Full of big fatties. <laughs> How does this sound, eh? We'll all come over this summer. Spend some time together. Aye, aye. No, no, no. We'll come over. I'll book it when we get back to the house. I mean it. I'll know that you're doing. Really? Aye. You guys all right, are you? Aye, aye. Aye, I've said my sorries, Jack. Aye. Aye, we're good. Isn't that right, John? Brand new, Dad. Yeah. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Jack! Back in the pipe! I know. Well, there's a hell of a lot going on, you know. <laughs> So John's coming over in the summer with the family. Oh yeah, I am indeed. Not much smashing. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I can't wait to see their faces when I tell them they're not going to Disney World. They're going to Craig Lang. <laughs> Disney World. <laughs> the council's just repainted all the swings in the park. Yeah. I'll buy a nice boat and a vids. Mm. So new Greg's opening the high street. <laughs> Disney World's a plain hoot. Yeah. Near the state store. So John oh, busted you right there in the Klansman. Aye. That's a shame. I'm sorry I missed that. Some state of affairs, isn't it, Winston? Pish. The way I see it, I've been lucky. It could have been my lungs. I, I was doing 80 fags a day, senior service to. No arsing about with your poofy silkies. <laughs> it's funny that, isn't it? You never think that when you're lighting up, that one day they might have to hack a limb off you, but that's what's happened. Anyway, what's been happening with you? Jack's back in the pipe. Oh, good, aye. Aye. Uh, Hard to imagine you without it. Oh, aye, the guy in the bed at the end of the world. Wants to buy my slippers off me. Have you heard that, aye? Aye. For every arsehole in the ward. Right, we'll, uh, we'll away and let you get a rest, Winston. Aye, let me get a rest. There you are, sweetheart. Well, there's a bit of company for you, Mr Ingram. Winston, is that you? What are you doing in here? Never mind that, the new. Wait till I tell you what Nurse. happened to me, Winston. <laughs> Absolutely love this show. It's getting harder and harder for me to actually react, like do actual reaction to it and not just have a watch along. But if I do a watch along, well, I'll move to Twitch because that just won't feel right, to be honest, would you? Because I feel like I got to add something that's a proper reaction. It's getting harder and harder because I, I enjoyed this so much. And these two episodes right here, oot and off, uh, both af or however you say it, it, both. I think this episode right here might be. I think the way that the season, last season ended, this season started, and now this season has ended. 
three of the best episodes and two of them being bookend episodes. This one right here with Victor playing uh, like he's sick with his son on the phone. And the son, you know, the story arc for his son so far has been all we've ever heard is Victor on the phone with him. And the son is always making excuses of why he can't come or why his dad can't go down to like London or wherever to take and see him. And it's just, you know, it's just weighed heavily on him. And it's one of the reasons why Jack took him to Canada. And in this episode, you know, he plays sick to get the sympathy and, you know, get his son a little bit worried. And it kind of backfires because the son comes to see him. But at the same time, they're able to take him and get a little bit, you know, hey, look, I miss you. You know, and his, his son sees that and is like, you know what, we'll take him come here for the summer. But with the, <laughs> you throw in the side stories of Winston and his foot and no circulation. So now it's got to get chopped off, which how's that going to work? gets chopped off you know it's got to get chopped off and isa going to the to the medium there soothsayer or whatever doing the tarot cards and being told you're gonna get money there's gonna be a baby born and you're gonna die and <laughs> you're gonna hit by a silver car and yeah she got hit by a silver car but i want the big one just one of the better put to get like it might be the best episode out of all of them so far but the one before that oot, with uh the fella coming out of the uh the apartment and just Winston always, always stuff backfiring on him. And that right there, trying to put together a TV for for, for nothing, basically. And every, it, that going up in flames, literally. Just that whole, this whole two episodes right here, really, really just excellent, excellent episodes. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.